Today I'm going to show you how to carve realistic looking tombstones made entirely out of insulation foam board. This will be a perfect addition to any Halloween decorations. So let's get started. What we're going to be needing are these items here. Just pause the screen so that you can capture all of the supply list that we'll need. Now for the tombstones. You could freehand this or you could do what I did, which is go on Google Images and find different types and shapes of tombstone. Then you're going to grab that as a reference and then start drawing it out. So when it comes to drawing a tombstone on your foam board, there's no rhyme or reason to it. You don't want it to be perfectly straight or a narrow box. You just want to create something so that it looks jagged or aged or cracked. So any mistakes can easily be incorporated into your tombstones. And that's why I'm just doing basic measurements here, free handing a little bit there, just trying to get general shapes of what I want my tombstones to look like. And then I go ahead and cut them with my jigsaw. Also, when it comes time to carving words and letters, the best boards to use for such a project is this colored insulation board or the pink insulation board. The worst one tends to be the white one. It's very clumpy and breaks off. So just stick to these two colors. Okay, so once you've cut out your shape, I have two different shapes here. You need to print out the names or the designs that you want for your gravestones. So I have Mothman right here and Pennywise. Love Mothman. So. I'm doing it in font 120 and the herein lies is font 100. So then what you're going to do is we're going to arrange them how we want and I printed this cool little Mothman logo and it's going to go like this. Same thing with this one. And as you can see for Pennywise, I have a You'll Float 2 that we're going to carve but we're not gonna carve it like this. So a lot of these we have to actually cut. So I have to cut this right here so that the Yule will be right over here. Okay, so we want this to go like this. Right in the middle, I'll go up there. Moth and man needs to be closer. So what we're gonna do is just we're gonna... So that way it's closer. And that's how I want it. Once you find it centered and it's good, that's when the, the real magic happens. We're gonna use this Elmer's glue. It's washable. Comes in this little tubes like that. It's actually purple, but it dries clear. Pretty cool. So what I like to do is I like to just mark the edges like that, just so I know where to stay within the boundaries. And then just spread the glue. Make sure you apply it all over. So once you apply it like that, you also want to apply it, especially behind where the words are. So we're going to apply it like this. Behind where the words are and just along the corners. You can apply it all over the paper, but the most important part is to apply it where the printed words or designs are. That's what you really want to stick all the way down. So once you got that, you apply it just like that. You make sure that it's centered and then pat it down. And we grab it. We center it to how we want it. Pat it down. And then just like that, right in the middle. And that's it. Okay, so when it comes to carving, Look what I'm using. I'm using a Dremel tool with an attachment. I'm gonna link this one in the description below as well. But if you can see, I we're not out a lot. Just, just a little bit. You can adjust this to give it the depth that you want. 
but we're just doing just a little bit. Another tip, the bigger the letters, the easier it is to carve. So the smaller you go, this tip would be too big and you need something smaller. So the kit that I bought comes with tips ranging in all sizes. And this is on the bigger end right here, but they make smaller ones and it gets kind of difficult when you have small words. So I like to do mine in 100 font minimum to get to make it easier to carve. So now that we're beginning the carving process, make sure you do it as an outline first. It could be a word, a letter, a logo like this. Just make sure you do the outline first and then work your way to the inside. Here's a closer look on how we carve the words. You need to move slow and steady with the Dremel. No sharp or jerky movements. Just let the Dremel guide you as you're moving it across the words. Make sure you're wearing eye protection and a dust mask or a respirator. There's a lot of particulates that are going into the air and you don't want to be inhaling that or having any of that in your eyes. Once you're done with all your carving, just rip the paper off. There's gonna be residue, glue, and pieces of paper left behind. That's no big deal. We're just gonna get a soaking wet rag, run it throughout the entire area, and it comes off like magic. Okay, so now we're gonna do a cross tombstone. I have this one by four that I had lying around, and it's gonna be the outline of our cross. So make sure you measure the center of your tombstone. I'm just gonna mark it. Okay, so for this particular cross, the size is 16 and a half inches tall by 14 inches wide. So make sure you do your measurements right. And I already measured it over here on the wood where the 14 inches are, where the middle is. I've leveled it, so now we can draw the outline. And this is what we have now. I've just cut these tips off, and now I think we're ready. So we need to find a good name to go on this tombstone, do the gluing and paper process, and then wait it to dry so we can start the carving and Dremel process. On to the next step, which is using this Stanley shaver tool that I have over here. It's pretty nifty, I'm gonna link it in the description below. We're just gonna rough up the edges, make it a little bit more aged, so you get it like this, Look how simple it is to take off the corner pieces and make it less, less polished, should I say. I also have this brush over here that I use to scrape off rust from tools. This one is pretty intense because when you go, look how it takes off pieces. So it's pretty jagged. This one takes off more than this one. So it depends on what, you, what you're trying to accomplish. So this one's more subtle, softens the edges. And then this one, of course, takes off big chunks and it's pretty hard. So let me show you a little bit closer up so you can see what I'm talking about. So we have this tool right over here. So see how it takes off the corner, makes it softer, just like that. Then we have this one over here. Takes off big chunks. You brush it up and down like that. So you see the difference? This one over here, and then this one over here. Okay, so once you've done roughing up the edges all around, I like to give it a cracked look to it. So you look at your tombstone and you figure out where it would look best to have a crack. So right now, I think it would be cool if I did a crack from over here just a little bit like that, and maybe one over here, like this, and maybe coming through over here. You get your X-Acto knife, pick the place you want to start, and we're simply going to make 
a jagged line in whatever direction you want. And then you go right next to it and you're like tracing to the side of it, not on the line, on the side of it, trying to follow the shape. And then I simply pick it out with the X-Acto knife. Just make sure you, uh, you don't cut yourself. And then over here, where it meets the end, you want to make it a little bit bigger. Time has worn this stone down. After all, it, it is holding a great evil known as Mary Shaw. And hopefully, if you've seen the movie, if you haven't, it's from the movie called Dead Silence. You should watch it. It's a good horror flick. I'm looking at it right now. I might just continue it just a little bit this way. And then continue to pick out the foam. Being very careful with your X-Acto knife because it's sharp and it'll cut you. And I think that should be good. But you're not done there. You can continue digging at it, make it making it deeper, changing the shape. I just liked it right there. So I might make a secondary crack right over here. Connecting there. And then I'm simply just tracing roughly next to it. That's how you do a crack. Super simple, super easy. Look at that. Love it. Now we move on to the next step. Next, we're gonna age this because right now it's just flat. It doesn't really have much texture or detail to it. This insulation board is very smooth. So what we need to do first, bottle of water. I broke mine, so. Let's see if I can get it to work normally. There you go. So first you're going to spray the words. And this is very important because we're about to apply a heat gun to this board. And the heat gun is going to give texture to the gravestones. The problem is that when heat comes into contact with a crack, with a indentation, with anything like this, the crack or the words, It'll shrink it, thus expanding it. And the last thing we want is for the words to expand anymore because we like how we carved them. And we don't want the cracks to get significantly wider, but we would like them deeper. So we're gonna try to avoid putting the heat gun on these areas. And by putting water, it helps prevent it from accidentally melting too much. So here we go, my heat gun. We're going to start over here in this area as we go like this. It'll start turning and bam, it's starting to turn. You have to be careful. Make sure you're wearing a respirator or outdoors while doing this. Okay, so now that we've roughed up the surface, roughed the edges, etched the words, carved everything out, make sure to clean it. Now we need to paint it. We're going to be using dry lock. It's a waterproofer. This is the color gray. They make it in white as well, but these are tombstones, so it's just so much easier to use the gray color dry lock. We're going to apply it with a brush or a roller. A roller is faster, but I feel a brush, you have better control when going around the words. 
because you don't want to paint so much into the words that the dry lock builds up in there. So when I'm painting around, I'm going to try to avoid getting a lot of paint in there. Once you're done with your second coat, it should look like this. Still looks a bit rough, still patchy here and there, but that's fine because now we're going to be doing the details with the acrylic paint. We're going to be using brown, black, and greens and we're just going to apply it inside of the words and in the cracks. We're going to make this really gnarly, so let's get started. So I'm starting off with some black acrylic paint. I'm putting just a little bit. I'm getting my brush, just a small brush. And then we're painting the inside. Okay, so I want to show you what I did here. I mixed green and black into a cup with a little bit of water. If you can see it, yeah, just a little bit of water. We're using our brush and we're going like this. Just like that. And see, there's streaks. We like that. It's darker in some areas. That's perfect. We just want to give it a weathered look. So, when you think you've finished and you see spots that may be a little bit rough, just get your spray bottle and gently spray them. Those spots will start to drip down, giving it a more natural look to it. That's better. Just like that. Just in the spots that you think needs just a little bit more softening or the drip down effect. And that's it. So now we're gonna glue the PVC pipes to the back of the tombstone. I'm using half an inch PVC pipe and this is gonna be so that the rebar can go inside of it. Once you apply the expanding foam all around it, it'll harden. Then you can stick your rebar into the ground and then slide these over the rebar. That way they don't sway in the wind and they're just upright the entire season. After a couple hours, you can paint the back of these tombstones with a gray or black color. It's up to you. But there's no reason to do any detail work on the back, so we're just going to paint it one shade of color. And here's the final product. I hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully you can make your own as well. Mm.